And now, the LSU Football Fix with Preston Guy, presented by Tiger Bait, starts now. And welcome on in to your LSU football fix. I'm Preston Guy, your host as always. With me as always every Monday night when he feels like it is Zach Nagy, staff writer at uh, LSU Country on SportsIllustrated.com. Guys, we've got an absolutely loaded, jam-packed show. There's a lot to get to tonight. Uh, with a lot of news going on in the LSU circles. Uh, we've got Gabriel Relliford, who's actually backstage. We're about to bring him on in just a bit. So get on to watching. If you have a thought or a comment you really want to get out there tonight, highly recommend the Super Chat function. We're not going to be able to get to everybody. There's just too much to go down through today. Okay. So we're going to get to that. Tonight's show is, of course, presented by Celebrity Theater. So tonight we're going to be talking with Gabriel Relliford, who fresh off his decommitment to Texas A&M, and he just took an official visit to LSU. Looking forward to hearing to, with, with, about his visit there. There's lots of recruiting news going on, including Gabriel Relliford's decision coming up on December 8th at 9.45 a.m. He's got We got the bowl game we got to talk about. Jaden Daniels named a Heisman finalist. And, of course, I got to get on my high horse and complain about the Heisman selection. So without further ado, I'm going to bring Gabriel up on here. And we're, we're going to talk a little bit of football. What's going on, Gabriel? What's going on? Thank you for having me. So, okay. thank you. Yeah, thank you for coming and taking some time out. I know I can't imagine the last two, three weeks must have been a whirlwind for you, huh? Oh, uh, yes, sir. You know, it's been it's been uh, pretty hectic, to say the least. Uh, but, you know, it's all a blessing. Okay, so I'm going to start with the big news. I mean, obviously, you've been committed to Texas A&M for a while, right? And they, of course, I, I assume it was a bit of a shocker to you when they announced they were moving on from Jimbo Fisher, right? right. My question is, was your decommitment from Texas A&M, was it more about Jimbo Fisher? Was it more about Elijah Robinson moving on, taking the Syracuse DC job? Or was it more external factors like you, you know, you just wanted to look into maybe another school looked better to you? Um, honestly, it was a combination of things. Um, one with the Jumbo Fisher news. Um, of course, it, you know, it hit me pretty hard. However, you know, I love Jumbo and all, but he, he wasn't the driving factor as to why I was going to Texas and him. But when, uh, Elijah Robinson, when he left, um, that was probably the, my last draw as far as me being with Anna. I'll I be honest, so. Coach, he oh. was probably the, the only reason that I was sticking with Texas a and And, uh, you know, when he left, it was like, man, there's there's really no point in me uh, actually going here. So, uh, you know, I, I decided to decommit. When you're kind of going through the recruitment process, how big are relationships for you when you're looking through different programs? Obviously, you're down right now to what looks like LSU and USC – with a decision coming, you switched it to December 8th, correct? Yes, sir. So when you're kind of going through the recruitment process as a whole, how important are relationships? Because you're obviously talking about, you know, with Coach Elijah, how that was one of the main deciding factors. So for you, just how important is that, just going through the process as a whole? Um, I feel as though um, it's, it's a big part, you know, of, of my decision. Um, you want to be around people who uh, who actually, you know, care about you and things of that nature. Um, the relationship with both USC and um, LSU – are both, you know, like family, both made me feel at home, you know, both give me the, the sense that, you know, I'm more than just a football player. And, um, you know, my relationships, you know, with those two schools is more than just one coach, it's multiple coaches, like pretty much the whole staff, even the, the recruiting directors, all that. So, um, you know, that it, it's, it's pretty big for me. Well, that's a perfect question because what I had to kind of follow that up was, um, when it comes to your relationships and your decision to make this, what what's most important to you? Your relationship with, say, your defensive position coaches, your relationship with your head coach, or your relationship with just the school and team itself? I would say um, probably my position coach in the school and team. Um, first off, I'll just say the coach because, you know, that's going to be the guy who's teaching me what I know, you know, ultimately developing me into – to where I want to be, which is the NFL. And uh, I would say the uh, school and team, just in case, you know, you know, you always want to be at a school where if you got hurt, you would love to be there. You like, you wouldn't mind being there, even if you weren't playing football. 
So that also plays a role. And, uh, you know, the football players, you're going to be around those guys every day, all day. So, you know, you of course you want to like the guys that you're around, you know, all day. So those those two are my, my biggest things as well. Obviously, you're fresh off an official visit to Baton Rouge. Talk about the experiences being, you know, in Death Valley, eating up in the suite, you know, getting to do the photo shoots, just everything. Because you've been, you've been on campus, dude, like several times for unofficials and stuff for game days. But now that you had the official under your belt, what was it kind of like just being with your family, the coaches, and just the overall experience? Uh, yeah, man. That, like I said before, they made me feel at home. Um, my mom, my dad, um, they definitely feel at home. Um, you know, it, it was it was a pretty good experience. It was better than all the other ones um, going down to LSU. Um, it was definitely different. Uh, I was happy that my parents got to experience, you know, how much those guys, you know, actually care for me and for us as a whole. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a great visit. Good. What's your relationship with, with Coach Jimmy Lindsay been like? And has he told you about, you know, if he's got some health issues going on. Has he hinted about his future at all? Um, You know, I'm be honest. I, I don't want to put his business out there, but me and Coach Lindsey, we're, we're you know, uh, we we talk here and there. But uh, you know, we got a pretty good relationship. Pretty I guess now you're kind of it's crunch time. Like you're you're entering you know the final stages of a big a big commitment. One of the top guys left on the board. Right. USC LSU race. I'm not gonna say like what separates each other from the rest, but you know, obviously USC is a fantastic program. Lincoln Riley has them on the rise. Uh, defensively, they brought in a new guy as well. So for you. What kind of separates LSU from USC and what separates USC from LSU? If I had to start with LSU, I'd probably say just the the platform on which they play. You know, SEC is definitely the biggest conference in college football right now. Um, I feel like that's the biggest thing, um, you know, other than, you know, they, them taking people, you know, from my area and my position and, and development, developing them into, you know, NFL players. They've done it a couple of times with guys from my school, guys from my area. Right. You know, we, we have a long history of, you know, 318, my area, you know, having great players go to LSU. What I say USC um, separates LSU. Um, I didn't mean to distract you. It just went with your comment. I'm sorry. Keep on going. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> that, that, it did get me. Um, USC is separates from LSU because um, I say USC definitely has a, a better academic program. Um, you know, it is in California, and California is the land of opportunity as far as, you know, business goes. And, you know, I want to major in business, and, you know, um, they have a great business program. Lincoln Raleigh has just brought in a, a, a great D.C. and Coach Lynn. And, um, you know, he has a lot of NFL experience under his belt. Same as Matt House, um, but, uh, you know, he just he's fresh out the NFL, and, you know, he brings, he brings NFL schemes with him. And, you know, being in an NFL scheme, would, would, I feel as though, would, you know, best prepare me for the next level after college. So, you know, those are kind of the two things that, you know, separate each other. For you, obviously, you kind of talked about how from where you're from in your area in Louisiana, you've seen people come down to Baton Rouge and develop them into superstars. For you, do you have any relationships with any, like, I guess, current guys on the roster or even guys who have gone through the program already and just seen, like, the development that they've had over time in Baton Rouge? Oh, uh, definitely. Um. Jeremiah Roscoe, he he's uh he's one of the guys who went to LSU from my school as well. Yeah. Um, Micah Baskerville, uh, Jarg Bernard, uh, those three guys have came from my school. Uh, Byron Dawson, um, those four guys I I talk to, and have a relationship with. Um, as far as um just guys from around my area, I'll probably say like Devin White, you know, uh, Greedy Williams, um, those guys I I've just seen you know those guys go there and and be great. You know, and, and and that's a big thing. I, I love so. There's going to be no shortage of three one eight three one great coming from you uh, wherever mm. you go, no doubt. Uh, also, you know, John David Booty is another guy from Evangel. Yeah, right. Uh, went to USC, so some Evangel connections. You know, Hester is another one who won four state championships there. It's a it's a, a powerhouse program. So I um I love that we're talking about relationships with players and teams like that. Um. One of the things I would wager, and just correct me if I'm wrong here, you don't have to go in depth, but I'd say you're probably a little closer with the guys LSU has recruited that's committed in their class, the 2024 class, just because of geography, right? right? But what I want to get at is you talked a lot about being comfortable with the team that you're going to be playing with, right? A lot of these guys in the Texas A&M class, you know, whether they were players or committed to the class, are now doing kind of what you're doing, new coaching staff, do I fit in? They're decommitting and stuff like that. Are there any guys you've talked to 
and uh, name them or don't up to you that you want to bring with you that you want to play with and, and go together name them just do it <laughs> oh anyway. man i ain't gonna fake um you know if i were to go to lsu I, i'd say i would recruit dom just to get the number one and number two defensive lineman you know in the in the state to stay in louisiana um I definitely try to get Dalen. However, you know, I don't feel as though Dalen would, you know, like Baton Roots. Um, so I don't know. I, I, it's just a little different for him. But if I had to choose, I'd probably say Dalen. I mean, not Dalen, but Dominic and and Bussy. If we can pull, if they could pull Bussy, that would be that'd be big. For sure. And obviously, kind of hitting back on the official visit back in Baton Rouge again. You're you're an early enrollee, correct? Like you're going to be on campus wherever you go, USC, LSU in January, correct? Right. So I guess entering crunch time and being fresh off of such a, I guess, exciting experience in Baton Rouge, what's like the highlight for you? What, what was something that you kind of stood out to you most over the weekend? Where'd you go eat? Just stuff like that. Um, to be honest, I'll just say like the the how genuine the coaches are. Honestly, um, it wasn't all about ball. They made us feel at home. You know, they they took good care of us. You know, and I feel like that stood out the most to me. Um. You know how you treat my family is a is a big thing to me. You know, so if you care for them, I know you'll be able to care for me. For sure, and the food's a little bit different, obviously, from North Louisiana and then down here. Yeah. Which is better eat, though? Eat, I have to know. That was my next question. Which yeah. is better? What was the uh, menu? I don't know. It's kind of neck and neck. I I had to give it to South Louisiana. It's, it's a little bit more more culture down there. I'd say. We're yeah, that's awfully noble there. of you. It's also correct of you. All right. Yeah. We're more close to Texas, you know. It's not as it's not as good, but you know, it, it's not bad. Thing, not yeah, bad. we hanging with them though. It's like yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, no, it's up there yeah. for sure, for sure. But yeah. down down south, and honestly, you probably have to go a little further down south than the two two five. If you want the best, the best man, go go to like Terrebonne, New Orleans. That that's probably your best. The hometown of Zach Nagy, New Orleans, down there. New Orleans. Um, what are what are your primary factors that have gone into making your decision or or the decision you have to make still? Um, I say just the the guy who's going to be developing me, um, the staff, how you know how stable the staff is, um, the recruits. Like if I mess well with the recruits and also the people on the team, um, and I'll just say, uh. Last but not least, how you how, how how I'm treated and how much they care for me and my family. Um, like I said before, um, how we're treated, you know, definitely goes a, a long way for us as far as these visits go. Um, we have had some good visits. We have had some, you know, some some iffy visits, you know. So, um, just just for someone to you know treat us right, you know, let us know they care about us, you know, that that's a big thing. When you go on your visits and you meet with these different staffs. For LSU specifically, I think you, I saw you put out a tweet a couple of days ago, maybe it was a week or two ago, where you said you're not a defensive tackle. You were talking right. about what you specifically are. What do you? Where do you envision yourself at the next level? And I guess when you look at LSU and USC at the same time, give them. I got to show them love as well. What? Do you, where do you see them utilizing you? You know, at the next level. But I guess edge, defensive line, maybe like as a jack. Where, where, where do you see? So both of them have pretty much broken it down to me how I've been used. Um, They've, they're saying they're going to use me on the edge. Both, you know, it's similar ways. Yeah. Um. You know, LSU is going to stump me a, a lot. Um. You know, just put me in a position to make plays. USC is doing the same. Um. Just put me on that edge, man, and, and let me work. That's that's why I play best. You know, people are saying like D tackle and all that. Like, nah. You're that's, right. And uh, and when I went up to these schools, like the D line coaches and the defensive coordinator straight up told me I was like, man. You're not a D tackle. Like they can't remember me. It was like you don't have the body top for it. And you know, I was say, you have to put on a hell well, of a I, I was really curious about that actually because I was like, you know, the the measurables are there, right? Oh, he's trying to show the frame now. He's like, like look at me, bro. I'm an man. Edge man. Mm-hmm. It's this there's that Joey Bosa build. <laughs> do what you gotta do. Do what you gotta do. Oh man, look. But, you yeah, heard me say you have to put on a little bit more size. He immediately moved that boy, camera down. Boy, you would need some of that 504 cooking to play defensive tackle. That's mm-hmm. that's for sure. Very slender for sure. Are you 255 legit right now? Right now I'm beyond. I'm I'm around 252. Wow. Wow, yeah. that's that's very impressive. That's that's very slender for a 252. That means it's very lean. What do you want um, your playing weight to be at the next level? Yeah. Man, just just the way that I can work it. I'll say 
I said I really want to max out like 260 at the most, to be honest. Because we were talking to Ashton Stamps the other day uh, when we were doing like player interviews and stuff, and he was saying how he put on so much weight when he got to campus. It was like it, it was unbelievable. He said he had to drop a couple pounds just because he was getting hurt. Like he hurt his groin and it kind of moved over to like yeah. Hampshire or something. So, yeah, I, I guess playing weight really matters more than even I thought, obviously. Yeah, um, some guys can't handle a lot of weight. So it just really it just really depends on how your build is, you know. I've got a, a couple just lighthearted ones here. I feel like we've kind of gotten into the meat potatoes of it. Uh, who, who, who's going to win the Heisman? Jane Daniels for sure. And he deserves it? Is that the right yeah, choice? He deserves I can't see a person, like, in the race, really. Honestly, I think he didn't did all he could to really, you know, uh, uh, plead his case, to be honest. All right, and before we wrap it up, Zach, do you have anything else before you want to wrap up here with? No, man, you hit on everything. I really wanted to ask how they were at, how they wanted to utilize you at the next level because I know he what you said. I know you were I know you were feeling some type of way about the defensive tackle stuff. So I wanted to clear the air on that. And I'm glad you know that there's a plan with this coaching staff. Obviously, yeah. with Coach Jimmy Lindsay and other stuff, you know, being up not necessarily up in the air, but just different right now. So I'm glad that we got that you know cleared out. And <laughs> look, man, yeah. that's a lot. a lot of people were talking about whether or not just because they see the numbers they see the the 6263 yeah, yeah. 255 and they're like well you could stay that or you could you yeah, could bulk up yeah. no doubt no doubt no doubt a lot of people um if they see me in person will say like dang man are you like 230 you know i just that's what i, I would have guessed 235ish is ba- just based on what you you know just looking at you just there 235ish yeah you still have him flexing on the camera <laughs> yeah but but then you flex a little bit i'm like ah oh, there's the other 20 right there ah, i see where is uh going on um do you, all right we're going to wrap up here but i do have to ask do you know where you're going to college where you're going to sign with already or is that still up in the air oh i say it's still in the air man um I kind of have just given myself a deadline as far as Friday because, like I said, I'm an early enrollee. And, you know, both USC and LSU are both my top schools, and that's very evident to me and my family. So I went ahead and broke it down to those two guys and um, me and told those two schools. And, uh, you know, this Friday, you know, I, I know about this Friday. I, I know God is leaving. Beautiful. Awesome, Gabriel. Really appreciate you, man. Thank you for hopping on with us. I appreciate that, guys. Make sure to go give him a follow on social media. You know, in the age of NIL, these players the, getting followers is not just about ego anymore. It's it helps them, you know, make business decisions. His handle is at grelifer nine. Is that your Instagram as well? No, sir. My um Instagram is uh at g a nine r i e l. Uh, there you heard it guys all right so y'all go give him a follow support his future endeavors whether it be a tiger trojan wherever it may be he's a standout young man i appreciate you for joining the show hey man good presence you might have a future in this keep an eye out (laughs) maybe keep some mass communication on the majors list huh yes sir i've I've had a little practice we got a little show uh a little little promo god from me football on amazon man season what you do your own show no, not me. It's from my school, but I'm I'm one of yeah. the, the 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 key key people in there. Interesting. That is yeah. so cool. Well, yeah. y'all make sure to go check it out. Appreciate you for coming on, Gabriel. Yes, sir. Thank you on Friday, man. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Of course. That was Evangel Edge Rusher Gabriel Relaford, quality young man. Uh, we've got tons to talk about tonight, guys. Um, so don't don't rush out of here or anything because we haven't even touched on the massive portal news that was going on today. We're going to talk a little bit of recruiting. There's not anything really in LSU's face brand new with recruiting, but there's always stuff going on. Uh, He talked about a couple of the guys we're going to be hitting on. I thought it was interesting. He mentioned Dominic McKinley and Terry Bussey by day. Uh, I I didn't expect him to do that. I mean, I I was hoping he would, obviously. I kind of told him, I was like, come on, like just spill it. Um, yeah, just just do it, man. I like how you're just like there. Put the peer pressure on. Oh, I didn't. Then I saw like nurse. I saw nurse in the comment section, like put emojis. I'm like, oh my god. I guess everybody kind of caught me trying ah. to like, immediately <laughs> go off. But no, man. What a fantastic interview. Good guy. I want to check out what he's talking about on Amazon too. We both might have to look at that. Yeah, I, I, so I gotta. I didn't have. I it was so fast. I couldn't repeat it. So I'm gonna go back and listen to the tape, just like y'all can. Y'all can already do it, by the way. If y'all go back and listen to it, um, but. Uh, definitely gonna go check that. That sounded really cool, man. This NIL age is just absolutely wild. The stuff. Yeah, that was a nice on. touch throwing that out there about uh, NIL and the following and everything. That was nice. Well, I feel like interviews are getting better 
in this NIL age. First off, we've got Colin Hurley, who is the best. And Matt Moscona took your spot the other night and asked who like yeah. the best ever was. And I was like, undisputed, it's Colin Hurley. There's been some good ones, but like uh, Colin, I feel like they're getting really, really good with their persona. Not all, not all of them, but th- they understand that there's some value to actually being good with interviews. So we're going to talk portal. We're going to talk recruiting. We're going to talk about the bowl game matchup because LSU plays a football game, right? And, of course, Jaden Daniels, rightfully so, named a Heisman finalist. So we're going to get all of that. Um, but first, guys, we got to thank some sponsors tonight. Y'all know how it goes. It's been a little delayed tonight. But, of course, we got to pay, pay the bills here, guys. The show's not possible without it, but we'll be quick. Don't worry. Celebrity Theaters is Louisiana's only locally owned and operated locations with locations in Ruston and Baton Rouge. Hey, there you go. Hey, maybe Gabriel Relaford will go to Celebrity Theaters right after this. Um, guys, because it's Louisiana's only locally owned and operated theater, you're guaranteed every single time to get a clean facility, better pricing, superior customer service, state-of-the-art technology, and of course the Baton Rouge location has the largest arcade featuring over 50 games in the largest theater and uh, largest arcade in town. They've got a bar featuring wine, beer, and frozen drinks, oversized look, leather, leather reclining seats, and of course the Dolby Atmos 3D sound system. All right. Because there's so much to do, I cut that short. We'll do some commercials later, push it back. First off, impressions from the interview. Now that he's not here, do you think that's a tiger? I feel like just kind of all the dominoes falling the way that they are right now would point in the direction of him ultimately becoming a tiger. Obviously, recruiting is so fluid, you just never know nowadays. Like Anything can happen at the final buzzer. But look, man, if I, if, if I was to be logging – you know, a prediction. I, I would definitely say that I feel really strongly about Gabe ending up in in Baton Rouge for sure. He, he, he's he's a it's a position of need. It's a guy that this program's been on in a in a heavy way over the last couple of months. So I uh, I feel really good about you know his stance with with LSU. Joseph Lee Burrow says, "Dude already says we when talking about who he'd bring." Yeah, you know that's one of the things I'm always looking for because even though the recruit maybe maybe outwardly doesn't doesn't want to admit or know he still is picturing himself one way or the other and things can change he's obviously given himself some time to change i actually somewhat believe him that he hasn't made up his mind 100 percent yet simply because yes he's committing in four days right what is that friday morning at 9 45 a.m all right but this is out of necessity this isn't like a date he picked in the middle of summer Right. When he he's like, all right, I know I've had enough time. I'm just going to stunt and act like I don't know exactly where I'm going. I believe him because it's been a wild ride. Jimbo Fisher fired, what, three weeks ago. Right. Then uh, Elijah Robinson, he said Elijah Robinson was the last straw. And what was that? Three days ago, he took the Syracuse DC job. Is that right? It uh, anyways, it was within a week. So it it's been, yeah, it was yesterday. Oh my mm-hmm. God, dude. You know, one day now feels like yeah. three days. That's the last wild. 20, like the last 24 hours of his recruitment has been such Bonkers. a whirlwind. So he's of course having to do these things quickly because he's gonna be an early enrollee. Precisely. He has yeah, to. Like period, yeah. So I, I do believe him. So of course, in recruiting news, keep an eye out. Like you said, Dominic McKinley is a guy he mentioned, and I understand why he would want to bring Dominic McKinley with him, but you know. Just based on what I've heard and when I talked to him, I had an interview on this channel with him. Y'all can go back and listen to. I didn't really get the vibe that he really wants to be at LSU. But what's your read on him? Yeah, I would completely agree with that as well. Um, you and I have talked about this before. I feel like I say it almost every week at this point. It's like yeah. you have your in-state guys who either bleed purple and gold and want to be here or they want to go experience new things and go elsewhere. And for you, you had the opportunity to sit down with Dominic and kind of talk to him. Yeah. And it just kind of sounded like the vibe was that he wanted to get out and, and, and go explore different things. And if that's at Texas a and or if he opens up his recruitment and, and goes to maybe Texas or something, yeah. it, it just sounds to me like he's not going to be you know, in Baton Rouge for his playing career. So it, it is what it is, man. He's a talented player, but ultimately doesn't want to be here. And that's, that's perfectly okay. I don't, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a flip for Dominic. I just don't know if it will be a flip to LSU simply because, you know, there's so much going on there at Texas a and I know for Dominic McKinley, the defensive line coach is a big thing. And I'm going to be frank, LSU's position it's found itself in with Jimmy Liz- Lindsay's health and lingo um, hasn't helped. 
hasn't helped with that. If LSU had a rock solid defensive line coach that was healthy and we knew their future for certain, uh, I think LSU would be in a much better position. He mentioned Terry Bussey, the five star athlete, plays wide receiver, plays a little bit of safety too, doesn't he? Though, um, no. um, I, I think LSU's got a decent shot with with Bussey, right? I want to say yes, but he's a type, he's the guy who's going to be pushing it and going all the way until that February signing period. Oh so, yeah, no, he's pushing it back. That's right. Yeah, he's not necessarily a guy. So who's it's not like, not December twentieth. Yeah, he, he's going to be signing in that later signing period. So. You know, for me, it, it's not necessarily a guy that, that you have. I mean, obviously, you want to full court press him right now, right? Of um, but it's not the utmost importance right now because there's time. You're, you're not the the clock isn't ticking just yet. You still have a little bit of time, so you know we'll see on that front. Um, and then of course you've got Draylon Miller. Where the longer that goes on, the more I'm just a little. I felt a lot more confident about it a month ago than I. Yeah, did I, I agree with that too. It was kind of the type of thing where look, like he decommitted fresh off that visit. And it seemed like if something doesn't happen, that you know, imminent, then it, it's going to get dragged out for a really long time. So to me, it kind of seems like, look, at the end of the day, he might end up going back to Texas A&M. It might be where he wants to be. You don't mm-hmm. know what the family dynamic is of it all. But yeah, like you said, man, the more it drags out, the more I kind of sit back and think like, okay, maybe maybe now is not necessarily you know the time for him to be a Tiger. All right, guys. Transfer portal. Absolutely wild today. Hey, it, all right, we've got some trolls in the chat. I have to, uh, first off, the troll, Papa Troll, Bryce Coon, Nurse Charcuterie. <laughs> What's going on with the charcuterie board? And why are you unsubscribing from this guy? Should, do I have to hide his comment? Bryce is just. Is that his? Is people, that his show? One of my favorite people in the media. Oh, he's I hilarious. love Bryce, but he's a clown. He's such so, a clown. I'm not, I'm not saying anything else more about Bryce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I was having fun with him at the Keelan Moses commitment about just how like he's from Georgia and just like the geography of this state is just so forward to him. He might as well be in, like Baghdad right now. It's he's a corn so- ball. Like the only way that I can describe Bryce. He is. No, absolute cheese ball. Um, never. <laughs> just look at his comment. The answer is never. Get out of here, Bryce. It, see, he asked, when can I come on the show? Mm-hmm. Like, bro, you, you work with the direct competitor, man. <laughs> come on. Never. Uh, yeah, yeah, Bryce, though. forever Bryce. get a new job if you want to come on um anyways i can't hear you preston mm I'm, I accidentally tapped the mute button. Do you know how hard that is to do to like nail that? I couldn't do it again if I tried. I was, was sitting back. I've been having some say? problems with my computer lately too. So I was sitting back like, oh no, what I do? Bryce yeah. Coon says he just quit. All right. Well, let me send you the link real quick, Bryce. Um, what were you saying though? Repeat. Uh, what you got? Um, anyways, 900 players entered the transfer portal and a lot of big name guys. I want to talk meta big picture about it first off. Ohio State, Notre Dame, and NC State are three Power 5 programs who already have 10-plus players in the portal. That blows my mind. And you know Texas A&M is going to get there. You know some of these schools who are having coaches changes are going to get there. My big point is there's some big names. Dylan Gabriel is a guy. By the way, Oklahoma is pretty close to double digits, by the way, too. Uh, Dylan Gabriel is a guy who's entered the portal. Now, the word is that they have a very talented young quarterback behind him, and they're like kind of – yeah, Jackson sure. Arnold is yeah, that's very, it. very tough player, I'll tell you that. Yeah, right. And that's kind of the, the scuttlebutt. I find that a little – I feel like that's kind of like a little soonery, like a little sunshine pumpy mm-hmm. because – um, mm, it, it, I mean, Dylan Gabriel was very good this year. He was I mean, one of those guys who was damn near in the Heisman conversation. Yeah, no, he was right outside the Heisman yeah. conversation. He was, he was in the thick of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, early on, of course, they lost a couple games down the stretch to Oklahoma State and Texas. He kind of found his way out of it. But I find that a little tough to believe that they would want to go with an unproven commodity over Dylan Gabriel. But we'll see. My point in bringing up guys like that, LSU probably won't be in the running for a big name. Cam Ward being another one. Tyler Buckner. <laughs> hilarious what is up with that man i, I saw that uh, i read something where like obviously if he transferred again he'd be ineligible so he's just going back to notre i don't even know that is a solid all right 
he's transferring as a lacrosse player because it's right. a loophole. If he goes on a lacrosse scholarship, it's apparently he's eligible to play football as a walk on. I, I don't know, man. It's wild. And I don't have the exact details. If I miss got some information out there, that's a little bit wrong, but that's what it sounded like reading today. Um, anyways, LSU probably won't be in the running for one of those big name guys, but you know who they will be in the running for is an MJ Morris on NC state. But before I get there, my, my point in bringing up all this is <sighs> LSU has three guys in the transfer portal right now. That's a plus if you four, who's the fourth Bryce Langston, Armani Goodwin, uh, Trey Bradford, and uh, the walk-on kid? Mm-mm. No, because I know a walk-on running back hit the portal. Who's the fourth? Bryce Langston, Trey Bradford, Armani Goodwin, and Terrence Welch. So oh, Welch. That's right. Training. Good call. Good call. Yeah, with Terrence Welch. And Welch hurts the most, by the way, uh, in my opinion, because it is a position of need. We're talking about a young, talented player. But, you know, I guess if he wasn't cracking it in this secondary – he really felt it was time to go. But anyways, you're at four right now, which I would consider an A-plus if you end up at four. You're not going to end up at four. My point is, settle down. The sky is not falling if someone unexpected enters the transfer portal. This is just the era we're in of college football. Look around the country and look at these, these rosters that are getting ransacked that are hemorrhaging talent. I think Vanderbilt had three quarterbacks <laughs> into yeah, the portal. Yeah. Three. Uh, that's unreal. Ohio State had a guy who was supposed to come in and replace Marvin Harrison Jr. as one of their main uh, contributors, a wide receiver enter. Um, and I, I, you know, it, it's, it's pretty rough with a lot of these teams. It's just about you're going to lose some guys. And it takes some guys. Now, LSU has said, or I know the coaches are probably thinking about taking five to eight portal guys in. I have a sneaky suspicion as unexpected attrition occurs, that number's going to grow. I just don't think in this era of college, I think you're going to be taking 10 guys every year. Yeah, I agree with that. My, my thing is right now, certainly you have four people in the portal, and, and, and that's fine and dandy. It, it's day one. The expectation for me would probably be around that 12 to 15 range, 12 to 14 range of guys that will ultimately, you know, decide going, um, which ultimately opens up roster spots. It, 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 there's an 85 scholarship limit. And at the end of the day, it goes back to what you're saying, because you're saying that we'll probably take more than, let's say, five to seven guys via the portal. And if the more people that go, the more people that you can bring in. It's it's, it's simple math. So I completely agree with that. I, I think you're going to ultimately bring in a couple more guys than anticipated. Now. As far as names, likely names we're seeing. Well, I'm going to write one off the board right now. Jordan Clark's son uh, has committed to Notre Dame, right? Um, now, there were some questions as to whether or not he was the talent level LSU was looking for. Let, let's be real. He was a higher talent level than what was on the field for LSU this year, right? But whether or not that's what they're looking for, we don't know. I, I don't know how much interest there was, but of course that's a name. You know, he's Ryan Clark's son, Jordan Clark. You know, he's, yeah, he's going to get. We, we talked about it in our little group message. Yeah, we have a little group chat. Um, we, we talked about it. Brian Kelly was basically hinting at last year. He, he's not looking to do rentals anymore. Uh, the one-year rental thing, especially in the secondary, you know, whether it's a receiver and you want to go get a veteran and it's a one-year guy, he was basically saying like, sure, like what it is what it is. You, you have a lot of young talent on the back burner. But when it comes to guys in the secondary right now, he's not looking to do one-year rentals anymore. Like, Right. Converse, other guys like that. So I think ultimately that played a, a role in Clark going to Notre Dame just because maybe the interest wasn't as high for LSU knowing that he's a one-year guy, one-year rental, and he won't be here for the long haul. So, yeah, certainly pans back to what you were saying a second ago. Yeah. And I mean, look at, look at Joseph Lee's comment. Colorado lost both their quarterback recruits, which makes it interesting. I say mildly interesting for the Bryce Underwood sweepstakes. I don't think Bryce Underwood actually ends up at Colorado. I think he's a Tiger. Um Colorado lost their backup quarterbacks and the quarterback commits. And all that's left is Shadur, who's almost certainly declaring for the draft this year. Um, He's going to be a first round pick. So, you know, that's what I'm saying. Like settle down is my message to you. Like something's going to come open right now. LSU gets an A plus plus if this is all you're losing, because that's just the market 
900 players on day one. I can't get over it. So the names that we're looking at, first off, MJ Morris is the interesting one. He's an NC State quarterback. He's been there for two years, and he's had 700 yards or so in both his years. He's played in about four or five games each time. This year, he's got seven touchdowns and five interceptions as mostly a backup. Um, Last year, he had seven touchdowns and one interception, so a little bit of a down trotten year for him i don't know the circumstance of those numbers or what was going on i have not watched film on him it was a wild day Um, but lsu coaches have contacted him what that tells me he's a 2021 quarterback by the way which is a year above hold up who, who, who am i thinking uh we got ricky collins is 2023 colin hurley would be 2024 so he would be right in between them and nussmeyer age wise right um so it's When I hear that, it sounds to me like LSU wants a quarterback to add depth and push Nussmeyer, not to replace Nussmeyer. Do you have any information that conflicts that? I don't think that's wrong at all. I think at the end of the day, you need to have somebody. I'm going to use the word again on the back burner. Um, I'm not saying, you know, Morris is your guy, and that's the the only one you're targeting, and and this is your guy. This is what it is. Because – they can certainly go after other guys who might have a little bit more experience than him. But, right, to what you're saying, there's definitely some substance to that. Ultimately, Garrett Nussmeyer appears to be your guy for the foreseeable future, right. or at least a year or two. Um, but you want to have somebody just in case. You don't want to have to rely on a redshirt freshman in Ricky Collins. You don't want to have to rely on a true freshman in Colin Hurley, who's going to be so young once he gets to campus anyway. It's going to take time for Very him young. to fill out and, and get to that you know next level from a development perspective. But you need to have somebody else on your roster. You need somebody pushing Nussmeyer. You need depth. And you can't ultimately rely on a true freshman, or I'm sorry, a redshirt freshman in Ricky Collins if it comes down to it. So, yeah, absolutely agree with what you're saying. And it's funny because I remember when uh, Joe Burrow was leaving LSU and everybody was looking at the 2020 season. Yeah. And people were freaking out about, well, you've only – once once uh, Burrow leaves, you got Brennan, who's going to be the starter, and then you've got two true freshmen coming in. Uh, shouldn't we take a trans- – and I just remember thinking to myself, I said – how in the hell are you going to get a guy to transfer to be a backup quarterback who's experienced? That's just not the real world. Well, now in this era, it, it's like, yeah, that's totally doable. But I, I do think that MJ Morris kind of confirms the the narrative of a guy to a search uh, to add depth and and compete in the future for the starting role and, and push Nussmeyer, no doubt push Nussmeyer. He does seem to be a good fit for the system. There's no doubt about that. But uh, as far as other guys that to keep an eye out on, I'll tell you a big one to keep an eye out for. Really good needed guy, Walter Nolan at Texas A&M entered the portal today. Did that catch you off guard? Uh, no, ultimately it didn't. Once Elijah Robinson was kind of out of the picture, yeah. and, you know, Texas A&M is kind of folding like a house of cards right now. Um, I, I, I ultimately expected somebody like that to hit the portal and try to go maximize his ability as best he can. And that, that, that's certainly a name, you know, to monitor, especially at a position of need for yeah. me, uh, personally, I'm looking at Texas A&M, you know, defensive back, Jarden Gilbert. Yeah, that's, that's another one. He, he entered the portal today and he's a position of need in the secondary, obviously played in 10 games. Mainly. Um, if I'm kind of, you know, sitting back and, and circling one guy who potentially, not necessarily could pop sooner rather than later, but somebody who LSU is going to hone in on. It's going to be Jordan Gilbert, that the Texas A&M safety who entered the portal today. He's, you know, he's from around the area. He's from White Castle, I believe, right mm-hmm. down the road from Baton Rouge. Went to U. Went to U High, yeah. yeah, exactly. So if, if I'm circling a guy, it, it's going to be Jordan Gilbert, and I'd like to see them, you know, put a full court press on him right now. Uh, you know who I just thought of, who I didn't see news from today, the safety from Ponchatoula. Who am I? Jacoby Matthews. Mm-hmm. Uh, he I, he didn't enter the portal right today. He hasn't entered the portal yet. Yeah, but I would have seen that. You? Yeah. No, I was just saying, keep an eye on him. That'd be a guy you missed on last year. That'd be very, very, very helpful. He was he played a very good game against LSU, by the way. But he's not in the portal yet. Ohio State. We talked about them hemorrhaging talent today. Um, yeah. How about Jair Jair Brown, right? Who is originally from New Orleans, a cornerback and. Ryan Turner, another cornerback, just to keep an eye on. I think J.R. Brown is the one to really keep an eye on. You're from New Orleans. Did you see J.R. play at all? I didn't get to see him play, but I'm going to double down on what you're saying. I certainly think that that's a guy that you, 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 LSU fans should not necessarily get familiar with right now, but I think that's going to be a guy that they're going to lock in on, especially with Gilbert. I think those are two guys who I, I really like where LSU could be potentially sitting at. 
Yeah, yeah, no doubt. So th that's just a short list, guys. This list is gonna grow. There's gonna be more players that only come up. Only one, man. It's only been officially open for not even 21 hours. Not so. even right, right. It's it's wild. It, it, the transfer portal is wild, and I, I'm hearing there's gonna be more and more stuff coming in. Um, mm, just keep an eye out. Um, you know, I would say in a perfect world, Brian Kelly would want to keep to five to eight. Um, I think number one, unexpected departures, number two, unexpected entries, guys, you weren't expecting to be in the portal where you're like, well, hell, uh, that's a very talented player for, from the state of Louisiana. We got to bring him in. You know, um, I would also say the third caveat is this defense needs a total reworking because you are in a whole heap of trouble. If your offense is just good, like I think someone was talking today in the chat about, um, if Nussmeyer seventy percent as good as Jaden Daniels, that's a realistic bar, and still a very good player, by the way. Agreed. LSU's in massive trouble if that's the case, and this defense doesn't dramatically improve. Yeah, I think when it comes to the defense, like you were saying, I'm gonna again double down on what you're saying. It's not necessarily a roster reconstruction uh, because there's gonna be retention to a certain degree, but you know you're gonna have to go out in the portal and, and get some immediate impact guys if you want to you know, improve slightly. So I, I think you're going to see a lot of movement being made sooner rather than later. Again, completely agreeing with what you're saying. All right, guys, we got to thank our sponsors once again. Celebrity Theater is, of course, our title sponsor this year. So we thank them many times on our show. Guys, keep in mind, they have weekly promotions available for you. Monday is Senior Savings Day, $5 for all patrons over the age of 55. Tuesday is Bargain Tuesday, where you have discounted movie tickets and concessions for all. Uh, Wednesday is college night. Admission for college students after 5 p.m. is $5 at the Baton Rouge location. They have half-off arcades all day. Thursday is Baton Rouge location only. They have the Thirsty Thursday where they have discounted bar items. Guys, I also have to thank tonight our uh, one of our, our good friends of the show, Jordan Spector. You see the artwork behind me. There's Coach O, Joe Burrow. You know the Smoke and Joe piece here, right? You've seen the Dylan Cruz piece as well. Guys, all artwork designed to capture the eye of the tiger fan in your life, in your life. And the details are what's going to keep them right. Um, so the, the Joe Burrow piece are aired in 2019. And since then he's put out five more awesome pieces, right? He's got smoke and Joe. He's got coach Burrow and O with the championship. He's got a piece of tiger stadium that, that hangs above our head. Drew Brees, Dylan Cruz, and Tommy tanks. From the fireworks at Tiger Stadium and Alibox Box to the Golden Spikes Award, he's always spot on. Artwork is available in quality print and in canvas at any size to fit any room or any budget. Art is straight from the box to your wall. Guys, the coolest part about all this artwork is the, the this artwork hangs in the athlete's room. You see the Joe Burrow piece? That's in Joe Burrow's parents' living room. You see the Dylan Cruz piece there? Look, in the top right-hand corner, there's Jordan give, presenting it to Dylan Cruz guys. That's what I've always thought about this parse is you can get a replica of what the athletes are actually getting themselves. Make sure to use the link in the description of the video below and check out the entire bio collection there. Make sure to use our exclusive code TigerBait10 at checkout for 10% off your set purchase. Guys, you're not going to be disappointed with this artwork. All right. We're, as we dwindle down toward the end of the show, the final 20 minutes or whatnot, we're going to try to get to a few more comments and stuff as we go on. We got a little bit more open-ended conversation here. Yeah, um, chat's blown up. Yeah, the chat chat's having a good time today. Uh, I'm going to try to find a few and get them up there. Like, hey, guys, we've probably got over 200 comments here. If you really want to get your thing out there, put a super chat out there. Hey, if you're enjoying the show tonight and you enjoyed hearing from Gabriel Relaford, please hit that like button for us so we get people re-watching it and the algorithms help us out. It supports our channel. I really appreciate how supportive our audience, hundreds of people like our show every week. Guys, we just hit 25,000 subscribers. I believe we are the first LSU sports content channel to hit 25,000 subscribers on YouTube. So I can't tell you how much that means to, uh, to me. Um, you know, Mike started this channel a while back ago. I think it was 2021. We started this channel and really pumping it up and it's just grown unbelievably. So that means a lot to us, me and Mike and Zach and buddy Sanji have all worked very hard to make this channel better. Well, LSU plays a bowl game. Do they? They play a bowl game? It seems like an afterthought at this point, huh? Guess we can call it a bowl game. 
sure they do. <laughs> they do. They do. Look, the- ultimately, it, it is what it is. Everybody dreams of a New Year's Six bowl, and us in the media included. Every, everybody wants you know the bigger, the bigger the light or the brighter the lights, the, the more important the game. And yeah, it, it is what it is. You got the Rely Quest Bowl, and, and you're facing off against a, a a Wisconsin team that wasn't necessarily underwhelming. It was year one under Luke Fickle, so it wasn't the, the expectations weren't necessarily high. But yeah, man, you got a bowl game coming up on January first in Tampa, and um, everybody's excited. Malik Neighbors has a chance to make history, so I'm really looking forward to it. So, obviously, Wisconsin seven and five. The, you know, brand new coach coming in who's trying to run the air raids, not working as well as he thought he would. Um, who's the coach? It was Cincinnati's coach. I'm trying to blank. I'm blanking on his name. Help me you out. Luke Fickle? Luke Fickle. Yeah, Luke Fickle, yeah. right? Um, but it, it's not as sexy as you might think. But I, I have some thoughts on it. A lot of people wanted to play Notre Dame. My first thought was, oh, Jesus, I don't know if I have the strength. I was about to say, I don't know if the, the finger, I don't know if the Twitter fingers can deal with it after the Heisman stuff. Move on to Notre Dame. I wouldn't want to. Uh, I wouldn't want to. I, I as well. don't know if I have the Twitter bombs in me to survive a Notre Dame LSU matchup. I don't know, but I've been. I, I was fighting the good fight for uh, Jaden Daniels. I was, I was putting it out there, and I think I think he's going to win that fight. We'll, we'll touch on that in a bit. Anyways, I don't want to dive too deep in the Heisman talk, but anyways, I know we've been going crazy with that. I don't know if Jaden Daniels will play in the bowl game. Malik Neighbors says he will. I do not know if Jaden Daniels will. If he sits out, by, Caleb Williams is sitting out his bowl game. If Jaden Daniels were to sit out, he would be the first reigning Heisman winner, assuming he wins the Heisman, which I believe he will, to not play in the bowl game as far as I'm aware. That'd be a precedent. That'd be quite the precedent. Now, you know, in recent years, the Heisman winner has been in the playoffs, and Jaden Daniels will be the exception to that. I don't know that with this defense going out there, I'm not certain that you necessarily want to roll out a backup quarterback against a grudge match like Notre Dame. Am I right? Correct. Agreed. Big Cajonas Kelly says, Chef Preston. I changed. You're like looking one way, looking at the comments and looking at you on the other. I'm like, oh my gosh, so much going on. I hope the people waited to Saturday to vote. I don't know. I feel like whether it's before or after you were voting for Jaden, I'm going to be frank. Now, probably more likely after, but there are. We know your stance. We know your stance. Yeah. We're all on the same page over here. so, so, So here's the thing is that before the game, you wanted people submitting their ballots. Before the before the Pac-12 championship, because well, if Bonix wins the Pac-12 championship, it's going to slant it in his mm-hmm. favor. Well, then he lost, so it did the opposite, went the other direction. So I'm not sure. I think either way, it, it benefits Jaden. He he misspelled my name, uh, the chef. But the joke the joke is on Twitter. I was having fun uh, roasting some uh, some Oregon Duck fans. They You're came after me. Them. You were I would just them. tweet objective facts unless you were like that that Yahoo from uh, the Oregon radio, John Canazero or whatever. Um, and I, I, I put him on blast and then people just kept on responding, attacking, whatever. And the points were so easy to debunk. Oh, Jaden Daniels padded his stats. Oh, Jaden Daniels played a week schedule. Oh, this and that. And it's so easy to debunk. I just did it time and time again. So as a joke, I just... After the Pac-12 championship, I renamed myself on Twitter Chef Preston, cooking them fools. Uh, I, It'll be there for a while now. It's, <laughs> Twitter's not letting me change it back, so everybody's cracking jokes on me. I'm stuck as Chef Preston guy on Twitter for a while, so it is what it is, guys. Welcome to my kitchen. Say bon, huh? Um, anyways, um, I think the uh, LSU Wisconsin is going to be one of the most heavily favored matchups. LSU's minus ten, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um. In the ESPN ball pick em contest that they do, it's probably the biggest challenge. You know, hundreds of thousands of people submitting their bowl pick. Over 96% of people have picked LSU to beat Wisconsin. That's the heaviest favorite of all the bowl games. So it's a very manageable bowl matchup. It's a good opportunity to, to get a 10th win. That's a that's something. It's no, it's not like hanging a Heisman trophy in your in your, you know, in your yeah. trophy room. 
But to say that you had back-to-back 10 win seasons on your first two seasons with Brian Kelly after a sub-500 finish over your last two seasons, it's a, it's, a, it's a big deal. Good positive momentum with the program and a good message to sell recruits, right? Yeah, completely. Once again, like I'm, I'm just going to sit here and damn near repeat everything you said. I, I completely agree with that. I think back-to-back 10 win seasons under Brian Kelly is significant. And you're, you're playing for something. It, this isn't a game where you're just – you know, throwing the backups out there and just saying, like, screw it. Like, you know, you, you're kind of out there and, and you're, there's stuff to play for. You want to get that 10-win season. It, it's a good selling point on the recruiting trail. And you want to get Malik Neighbors those 22 yards, man. You, you wanted to break that record. It's it's something – there we go. Beautiful. Nice well, court. Well played. Um, so, look, you're playing for something. This, this is something, you know, worth a damn for this team. And they're going to go out there and, and try to handle business against a Wisconsin team that isn't going to be, I guess, a slouch per se. They're going to come out there with something to prove as well. Right. So. I'm certainly excited to see how this goes down, and uh, you know it, it's it's going to be it's going to be something. I don't think this is one to overlook. Ten point spread is big, though. Yeah, ten point spread is big. Yeah, but let me, let like me. she said, I I think Malik plays. Um, you know, he, he, he said that record's mine. Like I'm I'm pretty sure. I also did. Did you see the video of Malik Neighbors crying at, at the Texas A uh, Texas A and M game? Like, yep. I think he loves being an LSU Tiger. Mm-hmm. I I think. You know, and then he said something about like abandoning his team or something. Maybe not abandon was the word, but he basically said, kind of doesn't want to quit on his brothers. Doesn't want to quit on the team, Mm -hmm. right? Wants to be there for them, right? Um, Some good vibes with Malik Neighbors, man. Um, That's a tiger. Yeah, you know, I read the quote. It was up there with uh, uh, John Trey Kirkland's quote: "Man, we fighting tigers, man. Mm -hmm. We got eleven. We gonna show up." He's fantastic. Oh, that was the best sound bite. Uh, you know, that was the best, like, I don't know, 45, 14 butt whooping I've ever seen LSU take. Cause it was just like, nobody's there, but they're fighting with what they got. You know, they're down crazy. to their third string head coach. They got a uh, wide receiver playing quarterback. Uh, by God, Austin Deculus is there starting at right tackle because he will be there. Uh, I'm surprised he ever left. <laughs> yeah. Just um, unlimited eligibility. Just, just absolutely love it, man. Um, but anyways, Heisman Trophy talk. They named the finalists tonight. You got, as expected, Jaden Daniels. You got Bo Nix, Michael Penix Jr. And surprisingly, when I say surprise, the fourth one was the one I was like, are they even going to have four finalists? Because I assume it's going to be those three by County Mile. And then a massive drop off. And sometimes they don't invite a fourth or fifth guy. Um if there is a massive drop off, um, they invited Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, uh, without targeting, Mar- I'll just say, that, what are your general thoughts on the overall um, uh, finalists? I'm going to try to not go down like a dark path and be a villain per se, because Marvin Harrison is one hell of a player. He's fantastic. And certainly, if maybe there was somebody different throwing him the ball and there were different you know, variations within the Ohio State system. Maybe his numbers could have mimicked somebody like Malik Neighbors. Um, but at the end of the day, he did get that invite, and he's a fantastic player. But certainly his numbers don't represent somebody who would be a Heisman finalist right now. Um, you could even argue that his numbers might not be that of a Bolitnikoff finalist. Let's say. Um, but I'm not going to sit here and, you know, try to take away from what Marvin Harrison is as a player. He's fantastic. Um, Heisman finalist this year. Probably not, just because the numbers don't show that. Um, because, I mean, if you're going to pick a wide receiver, you know, and it's going to be a homer take, obviously, being on an LSU podcast and stuff. But you, you kind of got a point in the direction of somebody like Malik Neighbors, whether it's yards, touchdowns, yards after catch, tackles uh, missed, whatever, whatever kind of category you want to go down. Malik Neighbors kind of beats Marvin Harrison in those categories. I'm going to segue and ask you a question here and say, do you think by Marvin Harrison being a Heisman finalist, does that help Malik Neighbors' Bolitnikoff case? Does it help Marvin Harrison's mm. Bolitnikoff case? Or is there just no type of, you know, any, it doesn't even matter. There's just nothing relevant to that. Well, it's not the same voters. Right. Um, I do think it's reflective of there is a national narrative that Marvin Harrison Jr. is the best receiver in the country. Precisely and although – a lot of people are in the know debunking that frequently. I think he's the eighth leading receiver in the country, right? 
Uh, Malik Neighbors' numbers on his side by side, they don't look anywhere close, but that shows that the name brand recognition of a Marvin Harrison Jr. And we all know, I mean, he is a beast. He's going to be going in the top 15 of the NFL draft. Uh, he's been around longer. Right? Remember, a lot of these awards are career achievement awards. Remember, um, Who's the safety for LSU who won the Thorpe? Grant Delpit, right? Grant Delpit, was amazing yeah. as a sophomore. Incredible season. As a junior, he played hurt most of the year and wasn't very good and still won the Thorpe Award because he was on an undefeated team and he was recognized, right? That's the same kind of stuff that happens with these awards. So I believe it does hurt. It, it, it shows that he will probably win the Bolitnikoff as well, as undeserving as he is. And I'm not insulting him as a player. It's not that he doesn't deserve it. It's that others deserve it more. I mean, look, you know, I was talking to a Heisman voter, multiple Heisman voters I've talked to, um, but I've talked to a Heisman voter about Malia, their, their ballad. One of the things they were bringing up is the real conversation here is look at Malik compared to receivers historically. He's right there with guys like um, uh, who, who's the Deshaun Smith. I'm sorry. Wait, who's the um, the Alabama guy? Help me with the name. The Devontae. receiver, Devonte Smith. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, uh, guys. CTE played football too long. I can't think of names. Anyways, um, right there with Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, like some of the best receivers we've seen. He, statistically, he's right there with him. Doesn't right. he deserve a little bit of Heisman buzz? Now, he wasn't saying. He was saying he might put Malik at number four on his ballot, or you know, I'm just just saying. Um, Maybe maybe Malik got snubbed a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to go out here and argue. For the Belinikoff, I'll say this. Jaden Daniels has a stronger argument for the Heisman than than he has for the Belinikoff simply because the quarterback argument. Kyle McCord is not as talented a player as Jaden Daniels is as a passer. So, I mean, of course, Malik Nambu's numbers are going to look better with that so that's that's really hard to argue against guys got one more sponsorship before we wrap up get your comments in and we'll try to get best to get into them but anyways guys hey tiger fans you know where to shop to show your tiger fried this holloway uh, holiday season alumni hall is your ultimate shopping experience they've got the best and largest selection of apparel for the whole family nike nike golf champion columbia peter millar southern tide hats yetis gift accessories and more they even got some of those jumbo giant hats i took my son to the store the other day handed him one it was bigger than him very good stuff uh lsu students faculty and military receive 10 percent off in store every day you can earn cash back with their hall pass rewards alumni hall located in perkins row or at any time at alumni hall.com alumni hall where tiger fans shop and guys of course we got to thank our title sponsor one last time celebrity theaters guys Celebrity Theaters houses eight to ten auditoriums where whether you're interested in hosting a birthday party, private movie screening, corporate meeting, arcade party, whatever it may be, they've got the perfect facility to fit your needs. Celebrity Theaters is proud to offer party packages for children of all ages. Let it let them handle everything from movies to entertainment to setup to cleanup. For more information or to book your party online, visit celebritytheaters.com backslash events or send them an email. Events at celebritytheaters.com. Oops button there all right <clears throat> anyways my overall thoughts heisman jane daniels deserves it jane daniels will win the heisman trophy jane daniels is the most outstanding player in college football i believe yes i'm biased i'm an lsu alumni yes i cover lsu's beat yes i watch lsu more than everybody but the numbers my bias might might show through but the numbers the numbers aren't going to show through somebody just because i like them more the numbers are very heavily slain. By the way, Jaden Daniels still leads the country in total yards by like 800 yards. Like it's wild. And he's played one less game than the next two guys. Like it's, it's, it's unbelievable. I believe he will win by a comfortable margin. Uh, I do believe there's a lot of West coast guys who are stuck in their ways. Brian leaf was like congratulating Michael Penix jr. For winning the Heisman. It's like, man, uh, Are you under a rock? Yeah, I mean, just just say you're a West Coast dude and you're not voting from anybody for the SEC. Like, you know, uh, it, and the whole argument of a 13 and 0 team, like, I I feel like that's a factor, but it's not the end all be all, Correct. right? To say anybody is objectively better than the way Jane Daniels has played this year means that. That's your only factor. You are exclusively picking the most outstanding player 
from the most outstanding teams. That's it. And that's just not a true, it's a disingenuous way to select to the most outstanding player. It's a way of filtering out who you don't like um, that I don't like. So I believe he will win it. Uh, I think Marvin Harrison. <laughs> so someone made a meme of the soldier guys and there's a clown in yep. the group with all the other soldiers. One guys. of these is not like the others type thing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I, I tweeted out the uh, Greg Sankey's tweet about the the balloons. One of these is yeah. not like the others with Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, pretty funny stuff. Uh, I think he's going to be a very distant fourth because there's a lot of guys you could slide into that fourth spot. I think he just got there because, I mean, who are you going to put for? Drake May? Gabriel Relaford? Jalen Milrow, maybe? Carson I mean, Beck? Like, uh, Jalen Milrow? I, mean, I would put Marvin Harrison Jr. above Jalen Milrow. Yeah, like, I don't even, like, I, yeah, I guess if you had to pick a fourth, Malik Nathan, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, look, I'm just saying, like, I was really wanting to avoid saying Malik Neighbors. I might go Malik Neighbors just because he's actually earned it, but. I don't want to, I don't want to pull the homer card. I, yeah, I was going to say, I'm trying yeah. to avoid the, I'm trying to put my bias to the side. Yeah. Right, and not put him in there because I think I've used all my bias points <laughs> with all my advocating for, oh, for yeah. and Daniels, right? Um, neighbors over Harrison, I believe Neighbors and Daniels will get awards Friday. <sighs> you know, I'm, I'm I'm hoping so. I think one of them does. I, I do think Neighbors has an uphill battle to fight. <laughs> Let's see here. <laughs> I call it Phoenix. <laughs> uh, let's see here. What's up, fellas? 50 touchdowns, 1,100 yards rushing. Enough said. That's from CK. All I got to say is if you look at the passing statistics, Jaden Daniels is really within an earshot of, of, I think he's third in the country. Before the conference championship, he was within 100 yards of being the nation's leading passer. By the way, it leads the nation in passing touchdowns. Mm -hmm. That's before you count his 1,100 yards and 10 touchdowns. That would have him like third team all SEC as a running back by itself. And minus a game. Like you can go, you, the list goes on and on. Yes, absolutely. We are witnessing a video game created player as well. You and I were talking about that. It was like if you pulled up like NCAA, right. turn the sliders all the way down to like rookie mode. And yep. that's damn near what Jaden Daniels played on this season. Like, it's just – it's historic. He rewrote the record books and did something that we hope might not see for a while. You never know. We said the same thing about Burrow. But, look, what he's doing is historic. So, it's yeah. incredible. His numbers are insane, and he's deserving of that trophy that, he, that he's going to be hoisting up on Saturday. It's bonkers. Um, dude, we got to do something when NCAA comes out this year. We got to. We, we got to stream something. Guy. You know, I, I stumbled on uh, the WAFB guy, John Eads. I discovered he has like a whole NCAA football channel where like he like creates playbooks and stuff for NCAA football. The dude is like, like a legit, like I'm like, man, we got to put some sort of like media tournament. I've been playing NCAA something. lately, so I, I need to get some. Really? Like stuff. you have your like Xbox 360? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. I'm, I'm invested. <laughs> Big NCAA guy. Dude, I was such a big NCAA guy. I, I'm sad. Now, I still have my Xbox 360 for that purpose. Like, once a year, I'll bring it out. Update. They update the roster still. Did you know that? Do. Like, you yeah. can download the updated rosters. I go in, like, phases. Like, I want to play it sometimes. I don't want to play it sometimes. But when I'm playing it, I'm all yeah. in. Like, you can't get me off that controller. Every every August, I'll yeah. go and create a little franchise team and play with LSU. And I'll simulate this season and see how it goes. I think the team, when I simulated it this year, they went, like, 7-5 and five or something like that. I was like... Yeah, well, and I look up Nussmeyer and Daniels both got hurt all year, mm. and Ricky Collins was doing his best as like a 74 overall. I'm like, ooh, okay. Uh, <laughs> anyways, Carl Dunn, good evening, Chef Preston. Bonjour, comment allez vous? Welcome to my kitchen, folks. Let's see here. Yeah, see, look, Mark Cumbie's there with us. Yeah, yep, I'm right there. <laughs> Still has the PS2 NCAA mm. game. That's what I'm saying, man. Like, it's legendary, man. I can't wait for them to have a new one. It'll come out in the middle of summer. So I don't know. I kind of want to do like a media tournament, like all the young media guys. Let's do a little tournament or something, but we'll see. Anyways, guys, appreciate y'all for watching. Appreciate y'all for subscribing to the channel. If you're not subscribed, do so already. We get the metrics for the channel. It's unbelievable. About 90% of our viewers aren't actually subscribed to the channel. So hit that subscribe panel. 
get the bell hit to get notifications when we go live, guys. This isn't like a lot of other channels out there that are going live with shows like 14 times a week or whatever it might be. We do about two or three shows a week. Right now we're down to two. It's my show and Mike's show. We also do a post-game show. My show will end around, uh, it's whatever signing day in February is, that'll be the final show for this, the football show, right? Um, and they're talking about doing a uh, baseball show. We'll see. I don't know. He, he Mike's been talking about that for a while. But uh, anyways, real good channel. Keep a watch. I appreciate all the subscribers. Y'all go check us out. Make sure to give Zach Nagy a follow on Twitter and catch up with his work on sportsillustrated.com. What's, what's, the, what's the local website? Yeah, check us out on LSU Country. You know, same old thing. I'm, I'm here every week. But yeah, check me out on, on Twitter at ZNagy20, LSU Country. We have a Twitter site as well, Facebook, wherever you want to check us out, we're there. So appreciate everybody for uh, tuning in today. It was a really good show. Yeah, it was a great show. Appreciate y'all for watching. Appreciate Gabriel for joining on. He was awesome, man. I love I love when the kids are articulate, polite, respectful, all that, all the good things you like to hear from kids. Great interview. If you missed it, when this show ends, go back and watch it. It's right at the very beginning, maybe, maybe two or three minute timestamp. Go back and watch that. Do yourself a favor. Guys, go check me out on Twitter at pguy underscore 77. If you want to see the chef get to cooking, that's the place. All right, guys, y'all have a great night. Thank y'all for watching.